I'm standing outside of a full service car wash and as you can see, the line is wrapped around this thing. And most people see this as a place to come get your car wash, but I see cash flow, I see real estate, I see an SBA financeable transaction. Car washes like these and even self-service car washes are one of the many property types you can acquire with as little as 10% down using an SBA loan. Hey, I'm Ray Drew, an actual SBA lender, and in this video, I'm gonna share six different property types eligible for SBA financing. Real estate ownership is a tried and true strategy for building long lasting wealth. The problem with rental real estate though, for me, is that if you use high leverage to buy it, it doesn't make any money. You'll be lucky just to break even, hoping that thing appreciates over the next decade. Small businesses, on the other hand, trade at very reasonable multiples, which means your return on cash is much greater than your typical real estate investment. That said, you're buying cash flow only. There are minimal hard assets that go along with it. But what if I were to tell you that you could get the best of both worlds? In this video, I'm gonna share six different property types that are also businesses that you can acquire with an SBA 7A loan. Now, before I start, why does this even matter? Why is being able to buy a property with an SBA 7A loan beneficial? The SBA 7A loan allows you to acquire these specific properties with as little as 10% down. This is much less than if you were gonna buy an apartment building, for example, and it's more profitable if you do it right. First up, we have the car wash. You can acquire a self-service or a full-service car wash with an SBA 7A loan, and you can do it with just 7% down. Now, this allows you to acquire both the business and the real estate, and the business is already gonna be profitable because the SBA requires a minimum of 1.15 debt service coverage, meaning for every dollar of debt repayment, the business generates $1.15 of cash flow to support it. And that's after all expenses are said and done. And that's at a minimum. And that's gonna be verified through the seller's last year's tax returns, which by the way, poses a problem for these car washes oftentimes because Let's just say a lot of car washes that are for sale that I've seen have really aggressive tax planning. Number two on the list, marinas. I'm in South Florida. We have a ton of marinas up and down the coast. Uh, if you live near a lake, you might have marinas too. Marinas usually consist of docks, which get rented, maybe a bait shop, maybe a restaurant, perhaps a gas station. And this under the radar property can be acquired using an SBA 7A loan with just 10% down. And some of these properties are worth a ton of dough. Probably tough to insure down here in Florida these days. I can barely keep my house insured and I live 20 miles from the ocean, but that's another story. The catch here is you have to occupy the majority of the property. So 51%. And often enough, the owner occupies the entire thing, sometimes everything but the restaurant. So it usually works out. Now, if your dream is to pump gas on the water all day long, this might be the way to go. Next on the list is bed and breakfasts. B&Bs are zoned in a way that makes them eligible for SBA financing. And you might have heard that Airbnb is not eligible for SBA financing. Actually, residential properties are not eligible for SBA financing, although there is one exception, which happens to be the next property on the list. But you can use Airbnb to market your B&B property but the catch is the B and B has to be zoned something other than residential to be able to acquire it with 90% SBA financing. All right, number four on the list is assisted living facilities or ALFs. These are incredible businesses. They're very popular here in Florida, especially Central Florida and the Tampa area. These are cute little assisted living facilities that are 12 beds, 30 beds, 50 beds, and they look like little houses, and oftentimes they are houses and they're very common to finance with SBA loans. The caveat for SBA is that the businesses have to provide some sort of medical service, which most of them do, whether it's helping with medication or what have you. But the tricky thing about these ALFs is the licensing aspect. It varies state by state, but chances are the facility needs a licensed administrator to be able to operate the business. And so if you're not one of those, your best bet is to partner up with someone who has those credentials. Number five, RV parks. These became insanely popular during COVID. The caveat with these is that the majority of the revenue must come from transient guests, meaning they stay less than 30 days at a time. That goes for B&Bs too, by the way, and hotels and motels for that matter. So with 10% down, you can buy an existing profitable RV park. And again, I emphasize profitable because if it's not profitable, you're probably not getting an SBA loan to buy it. Now, why would somebody sell a profitable business with the real estate? Well, first of all, you have to sell the business and the real estate together. When the business is the real estate, it's hard to sell only one of the two. 
but the answer is usually retirement or they just wanna cash out for a big net gain. Running a business is tough. None of these are passive investments. They all take certain skills, and for many people, running it will be their full-time job. Last but not least, and maybe the most popular, self-storage facilities. Now you may be wondering how these are eligible for SBA financing. Aren't they passive real estate investments and aren't passive investments ineligible for SBA lending? I don't know, I guess the self-storage association has good lobbyists. There is that little building at the front that sells boxes. Self-storage facilities are highly sought after and their prices reflect that. Out of the six property types I mentioned, this is the closest you're gonna to get to a traditional real estate investment. Honestly, with interest rates where they're at, it's hard to even find one that cash flows these days. The 7A loan is amortized over 25 years, and the cheapest money you'll probably get today is Prime Plus One, which today is 8.5%, and it's a variable rate, and don't call me looking for that kind of pricing because I don't have it. When you start looking to some of these investments and start crunching the numbers, you're gonna see a clear path to creating serious wealth for yourself. But no matter what you end up doing, know that these businesses all require operational know-how. No, they do not run themselves, and they all have some level of risk. Being able to buy a business with the real estate for only 10% down does open the door to a lot of opportunity, but it's not for everyone. If you're interested in pursuing something like this and have questions on the financing side, drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to help you out. So there you have it. If you found that video helpful and you want more expert advice from an actual SBA lender, then I would invite you to hit that subscribe button because I've got plenty more where that came from.